What's going on, everybody? Happy holidays. This one's going to be really quick because um, I, I came across something a couple weeks ago and I just never had the time to uh, put a video out to see if anybody else was doing this. If you're like me, right? If you're like me, you got a bunch of this stuff around. Vinyl remnants, right? Which means that, you know, you cut something and then you have leftover material for whatever, whatever. Um, so a couple weeks ago, probably about a month now, I was messing around and I just want to show you this. You see this? I don't know if you can see it. Um, cotton t-shirt, a piece of a cotton t-shirt, sublimation, right? Sublimation and this white thing, this white base, white base knocked me off my socks when I figured it out. Um, not figured it out. Let's say knocked me off my feet when I discovered it. So I've only been sublimating for about three months, three and a half months. Started with a uh, workforce 7720, but knew at some point that I wanted a Echo Tank 1500, 15,000. 15,000 came in a few weeks ago and I feel like I haven't stopped printing ever since then. But back to the subject at hand for this video. Um, this white base right here, flocked vinyl. Who knew? I never knew that you could sublimate on flocked vinyl. This piece here, already tested in the wash dry. If you can see, I haven't lost any detail or any color really in the design. Seven times, in and out of the wash. Washed with lights, washed with darks, dried hard everything I could to get this to fade and it didn't fade. So I'm happy to say that if you haven't been using flock vinyl as your base for um, some sublimation, then I think you should do so because I'll tell you why. Because of the feel of flock vinyl, um, I think it's the perfect material for heavier long sleeve t-shirts, even hoodies, anything seven and a half ounces or heavier this will be perfect using you know the the print and cut technique and i just want to show you really quick some of the examples so this is a hoodie flock vinyl not super colorful however the feel on here super super fits the weight of the the hoodie that's one another one for all my hip hop old heads, De La Soul. This is a hammer, this is a Gildan hammer tee, long sleeve tee, so this is about eight ounces. This perfect, perfect weight design. And if somebody happens to touch the print, it feels like velvet, velourish, not hard or paperish at all. It feels good to the touch. And also, um, all of those garments 100% cotton, and then we have this colors popping on this long sleeve T using the uh, print and cut technique that I showed you about um, super dope large print looks good I'm telling you I don't know how it's coming across on camera but this looks good in person so real quick if you want to if, if if you don't want to see kind of an overview of the process I showed in earlier videos then you could turn it off right now. Oh, you can stop this video now. But what I'm saying is I have been successfully sublimating on flocked vinyl over the last month. And what it has done is it's allowed me to add a different, excuse me, it allows me to add a different feel or texture to some of the heavier weighted garments that I'm selling. Mainly sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, and long sleeve tees that are over seven ounces. So let's take a look at the computer real quick. If not, thanks for um, watching this video. If there's anything that I misspoke about or that you find I could add to this uh, process, let me know. But I'm super happy, especially especially with this. Like here, I'm super happy. This is, this is so dope. So let's take a look at the computer and see how I got here. So if we take a look at the computer, I'm gonna just open Photoshop because I'm very um, I'm very versed in Photoshop. If you don't know, I used to be a professional photographer, a lot of retouching, so I learned Photoshop inside and out. And it's 
what was I transitioned to selling t-shirts and creating designs and stuff like that it was so easy for me to do things that other people would have trouble doing because they don't have the background in Photoshop but take a look so this is the design I started found this on the internet um, and I just wanted to see if it would work so I grabbed it and I, I changed a couple things with it I um, I changed the crown into a Philly P and this was the uh, the first the first design that I went with and then I even um, messed around with you know changing the logo on the hat so if you didn't know I'm from Philadelphia so I rep Philly hard so that's what the P is all about and the Philly Unite logo is all about so this was the first design that I went with I wasn't I felt like it was missing something so I messed around with it for about another 10-15 minutes and my final design that I came up with was this the Philly um, the Philadelphia Phillies P with the cityscape on top of the P and I added the mask and I changed the color of the hat red so basically what I did was um I saved this art and then what I did was I brought it up in silhouette so I'm using silhouette I know a lot of people um, say that they're using Cricut I assume, I never used Cricut a day in my life um, so I'm not sure the specifics of the Cricut application but I'm sure that the techniques are the same so basically what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring this Philly skull into my design into my desktop here I'm just going to change the size so that it fits right let's see here 12 cool right so that it fits on my workspace I'm going to come over here turn on my registration mark so I know how big to make it you all are should be familiar with this process already is is merely a print and cut so for me drag it in that's cool what I'm gonna do now is trace it right I'm gonna trace it I'm gonna run through this super quick trace the outer edge we're good here right then I'm going to add a offset to this apply it right then I'm going to take away this inside cut and just to explain what this does is it allows me to create that white border around my artwork which is going to be the flock vinyl base which allows my sublimation inks to sit on um, so here we go we're here with that now here's the tricky part I'm gonna run through this really quickly and show you what you will get once you're done with these two um, with these two um, pieces of your workflow I always group it so that I know if I move it they're stuck together right so what I'm gonna do here is this is my registration marks these tell the printer where to cut this red line tells the printer where to cut so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this horizontally because I don't want my registration marks to be flipped if I chose to mirror my print in the Epson software remember that mirror your art don't mirror the print coming out of the printer it if you're having trouble understanding what I'm saying to you watch my earlier video um, that I created using the uh, easy subly that explains the process so what happens is I'm going to print this I've already printed it and I've already cut it so at the end this is what that would look like right so you see that's the design that's the sublimation print uh, silhouette cut around the edges very happy with that then what I would do is once that's done I would load my vinyl cut my vinyl this is the uh, flock vinyl what will happen is on the shirt this will the side with the carrier is facing you when you press it boom goes down it's backwards here but when you press it this side will be on the shirt lay your design over there on top of the, your design which will sounds tricky however because you use the same cut line for both these two are the same size even if they don't look like it so they fit right on top of each other line them up press it 400 degrees 60 seconds boom you come out with this so if you can see the white line is because of the border the cut border that I made bigger than everything else I hope I'm not confusing you however if I am post your question 
hit like and subscribe and uh, make sure you hit the bell notification. You'll get notified every time I create a new video. I'm not I'm not creating videos every week, every whenever I do something or feel like something's worth sharing. I'll create a video about it. Um, and if you want to see anything or have any questions about my workflow or Photoshop or the refined process of getting these two pieces, just hit me up and let me know. I'll be happy to help. All right. Thanks.